Hey everybody, happy Friday. It's Friday again, here we are once again. Um, this week, Facebook Friday is all about the Daffodil Daydream Bundle and the Coordinating Daffodil Afternoon Designer Series Paper. It's very hard for me to say both of those because I wanna say Daffodil Delight every time because that's one of our colors. <laughs> um, Stampin' Up! likes to uh, get me confused. They like, they like, they like to do it to me. I think, I think they think, okay, what word could we create? What could we name this set that Eric is going to have a hard time saying? <laughs> and this is one of them. All right, let me share this over real quick to my page and then I'm going to open it up so I can see. Well, that's weird. Okay. Well, let's see if that works. Um, and then let's see if I can see your comments. All right, hello, Woo! there's lots of you here. Hello, TGIF. You know, I don't know about you guys up north, but the end of February to me feels like winter's over. Now I know that you guys probably don't think that because I know winter's not over, but it just feels like spring, like, okay, count down to the end of school. I don't know, I don't know, maybe that's the teacher in me. I just, I don't know. I, I kind of like January and February where you can just kind of do nothing, you know? It's kind of yucky outside. You don't have to go anywhere. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you guys feel like that. But here, the trees will start budding at the end of February. Um, we'll have green grass by the end of March. Happens fast. And then it'll be 100 degrees for the next six months. <laughs> That's a little bit of an exaggeration. It kind of, I mean, it is like 100 degrees for like six months, but okay. Anyways, today, Daffodil Daydream. I cannot just like say it fluidly. Daffodil Daydream. I have to think about it because I want to say Daffodil Delight. Um, I don't know if Kate's going to join me today. She had asked me about this bundle um, right when the catalog came out. Um, she said, are you going to do a class with this? Um, and I said, uh, no, but probably Facebook Friday. And she said, I need help with those dyes. And I said, me too. <laughs> because when you look at that set, there's a lot of dyes and it's very overwhelming. But I have made a cheat sheet for us. Um, I bet the blog post didn't go up because I didn't schedule it. Let me grab my computer. Um, I have made a cheat sheet for us that will be on today's blog post. I'm going to show you. I actually copied it from something that was posted on the Stampin' Up! Facebook page, I think. Um, and it was very helpful. Okay, let me, let me push, let me see. Is it all good? Do we have all the right things? I think so. Publish. Okay, now you guys check the blog post, see if it's at pinkbuckaroo.com. Um, I have to plug my computer back in because it's telling me that something's wrong with my battery. And now I have to go to the Apple store. Ugh, I don't like going to the Apple store. All right, I wanna show you a few cards that I got and then I'm gonna flip the camera around. Um, Cindy sent this. Look, she made that truck using that patterned paper. So cute. I don't think I've showed you guys this card yet, have I? Got it a couple of weeks ago. I've been holding it. Cindy, so cute. And of course, she used my uh, gingham and the pink. It's very, very cute. Thank you, Cindy. I love it. That paper is a host paper. Um, one of the things you can pick for free, not, I don't want to call it host, Stampin' Rewards. You know, like when you spend over $150, that's that big pack of awesome paper. Okay, now Christina, Chris sent this to me. Um, she sent me this card and I wanted to show you guys that, I'll cover up her address. She sent it in a regular envelope, okay? And she put two forever stamps and it came. So I had told you guys that I thought you were gonna probably have to put this in that bubble mailer, which would cost you about three bucks. But Chris showed us that you can send it. She had like, um, and I threw it away. She had like a piece of cardstock on top of it. Um, and it came through beautifully. It's a gorgeous card. Look, I didn't use the little turner. Why didn't I use that? I don't know. That's one of the dies in the set, but I did not use that. It's like I didn't even see it. So cute. It's so cute. And you know what? She didn't even do any stamping. All cardstock. Chris, thank you. I love it. And she taught us something, right? Two forever stamps. Now, I will say, it just depends on what postal worker gets your stuff. Because I mailed something to my team. They were all exactly the same. One of them got returned to me. 
and said postage was due, like like an, an additional $3, and all the other ones got delivered. So sometimes it's, I, I really think the postage, it's like going to the dentist. It's kind of up to interpretation whether you need a cavity or not. <laughs> Does the dentist really want you to get a filling? Because, you know, you have to pay them. I sometimes feel like the postal service is like, they're like, oh, I think maybe you do need to pay $3 on this. And they have us. We have we have to do what they tell us. Okay. Oh, Nina. Nina's always sending me cute cards. Look at this. This is that gorgeous paper, um, abstract beauty paper. Very cute. And it's like a fun fold card. She put those hearts. Really, really cute, Nina. Thank you. And Sandy, I just got this one. Sandy, this is so cute. She made a heart out of the paper, out of the designer series paper. I need to learn how to do that. That's very, very cool. Um, it looks, it reminds me of like origami or something. That's really pretty. Thanks, Sandy, for thinking of me. All right, and then I got one from, oh, Kathy. And Kathy, I saw that you have a new address. Thank you for letting me know because I would not have known. She wrote on that package, new address, and I changed it in my address book. You guys, if you ever move and I mail you Facebook Fridays and stuff, please just email me and let me know because I keep your addresses in an address book on stamps.com and I don't always catch that it changes if you just change it over on your Stampin' Up! account. Anyway, look how cute. All those hands she put in there, like they're all like, you know, it looks like they're dancing or something, high-fiving. I don't know, so cute. Really cute, Kathy. Thank you very much. Love it. Okay, thanks, guys. So sweet of you. Um... I'm gonna flip you guys around because I'm gonna show you um, one more time this flower flowering rain boots class. Tomorrow, I've extended the deadline just by one day because I forgot to send out the reminder email yesterday. So, so tomorrow's the last day to register for the flowering rain boots class to go. Okay, it features this adorable bundle. Um, there's four options. All of a well, five out of the six projects use the um, layering masks, which are fabulous. Um, let me see if I can get them out here. Five cards, one seed holder, um, PDF. You're gonna get two bolts of ribbon, some pa paper, um, the the polished dots, and six projects. You'll have everything you need to make. You'll need ink and adhesive. Um, I will do the die cutting for you. Um, there's a lot of die cutting in this class. <laughs> I've got my work cut out for me. So anyway, today, no, tomorrow, last day to register. I sent out an email um, a few hours ago to everybody on my email list with the link. Um, I can't put the link on Facebook or my blog. I have to only send it in the in email. So look through your email. If you didn't get it, then email me if you need that registration link. I don't typically check my emails on Saturdays. So um, if you want it, you need to email me quickly. Um, what was I going to say about that? Oh, if you don't have an email from me and you're on my email list, look in your spam folder because my emails go to my own spam folder. <laughs> Even though it says it's from me, it's still, it goes in my spam folder. So, all right, now I want to show you next week, I'll have this ready for you. This is going to be the class to go for next month. We are going to use the Seize the Day bundle. I really like this bundle. I think these are distinctive stamps. Does anybody know? I don't think they're even, they're, they're not putting it on the, <clears throat> on the thing like they used to, but they're flat but they have texture and that's a Stampin' Up, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, quality, not quality, um, whatever. They invented that, the stamp where you stamp it, it looks like it has texture, but it's flat. Um, I believe that's a true story. <laughs> I may be making that up, but I know I know it is. They have it copyrighted. But anyway, that's the stamps. Really cute, really cool dies. We're gonna be using that gorgeous new paper that's coming out next month. Um, it is absolutely stunning. So this will be the class to go um available beginning next week. Look for it towards the middle of the week. The PDF, of course, will be an option as well. Um, I've got to finish up that PDF, uh, get it proofread and type up all the listing and stuff. So it'll take me probably to the middle of next week to do that, okay? All right, there's that and that. Club Create, um, if you are in Club Create, your 
kits went out this morning, a few days early. My goal is always to have them out the 21st and today's 18th. I love it when that happens. Um, they all went out this morning. Um, let me think of, there was something I was going to say about that. You know what? I, if you don't get my Club Create email with a link to the PDF and you are in Club Create, please let me know because I'm using a different um, way to do that now. I've, instead of just manually sending them from my email account, I'm doing it through my email, you know, my, like my newsletter provider. And I, I think those may have a tendency to bounce. Um, so if you don't get it, let me know. Now, Club Create registration is open for the Your Biggest Fan. Um, funny story is a 3D project. My daughter's best friend who lives two doors down, he's a boy. They've been best friends since they were like two years old. He had his birthday. Now they're in middle school, so they have to be cool. You know, they're still best friends, but they have to be cool. It can't be anything like gushy or, you know, anything. Um, but she wanted to just give him money. We have, in the past, we've made him a money tie. Like we made it a tie. One time we put it in a box where he pulled out all the money and it was all taped together. But I didn't have time for that this month, this year, because literally it was like 10 minutes before she had to leave for the party. And I pulled out this and it had the um, double bubble gum in it, the baseball gum. And we stuffed the money down in there. And his mom texted me that night and said of all the presents he got that day, the, the gum was his favorite. <laughs> so I thought that was really funny. It's nice to have masculine projects on hand. I don't have boys. Um, but we have boyfriends, guy friends, dudes in our life that we need masculine cards for. So um, this is Club Create. You have until the 7th of uh, March. I can't believe March already. Um, to subscribe, $39. It includes all five projects, PDF, video, $20 in product, and shipping. Um, uh, you have the option to add on the bundle. Um, I pay the tax and shipping on that. And... That's it. Um, for those of you wondering, April's Club Create Kit is going to feature the Cactus Cuties. I've got four of the five projects designed. I've got one more to go, but the Cactus Cuties. You guys know what the Cactus Cuties are, right? Um, the Cactus with the Punch right here. That'll be April, okay? But you have to wait until after March 7th to subscribe to that. All right, the All-Star Tutorial Bundle. Um, this month, Artfully Composed. This is actually the bundle I'm giving away today. Look at that, gorgeous. Um, 12 different Stampin' Up! designers come together to put this together. Um, I am just one of 12, and we all design a project using the same bundle or suite, really, of products. Um, let me show you mine. There's mine, um, which is actually right here. They're video tutorials now, so you can uh, click the link, scan the QR code, it'll take you to the video. Um, so I think I think this is a pretty awesome PDF. You get it for free if you spend $50 with me during the month of February. I've already emailed them to everyone um, up until about noon today. I sent them out. So if you didn't get it and you think you should have gotten it, let me know because those emails bounce too. It's also available for $15 in my PDF store. All right, all right, <clears throat> let's see, what else? I felt like I had one more thing. Oh, I wanna tell you about the All Together um, products. We used these week before last. Um, some of the blends have already been gone on back order, which means they can't be ordered. And I noticed that a few more of them are now on low inventory. So just FYI on that. Um, nothing on the paper or the bundle yet. I am hoping to use that paper in April for uh, Club Create. <laughs> Fingers crossed that we still have it. All right, so I realized today that, that celebration's almost over. How did that happen? I have no idea. Um, but this is a celebration catalog. Surely you guys know this is what we're using today. I did not want celebration to end without using this adorable paper. Um, I have stocked up on it specifically for that print right there. I love that. And this print that we're going to use on the third card. Um, it's free with a $50 purchase. And if you get the daffodil bundle, the daffodil daydream bundle, um, that qualifies you for a free celebration item, which I would pick the paper if you haven't already. 
Um, also the rainbow paper, if you, you know, I would stock up on that too, because that once that's gone, we're all going to be sad. Um, there are also a couple of things in the back that are free with a hundred dollar purchase. Although if you're going to spend a hundred dollars or more, you guys know what I'm going to tell you, right? Right here at the back, you need to buy the starter kit. It's $99 no shipping, free shipping. You pick out $125 in product from either the spring or the annual catalog. Um, and then you get two additional stamp sets for free. It's about a, it could potentially be like $175 roughly in product for $99. Um, I put together a sample starter kit. It kind of changed it out. Um, home and garden. I love this bundle. Do you guys love this bundle? I don't have this scheduled to use until like the end of April. I think I may have to bump that up because I really, really like this bundle. Um, but but this is just so, like a sample of what a starter kit would look like. Um, you could get that bundle, Easter Friends, two stamp pads, two blends, a punch, um, a pack of rhinestones, and then two additional stamp sets. And I always say go for the expensive ones. I wish for everything, Friends of Lake Seashells. Um, or two of our more expensive stamps. So for $99, that is a bargain. Then there's this whole list of other things that you get. Um, you'll get a 20% discount slash or 20% instant income um, on orders that your friends may put in um, under you. You can be your one and only customer. That's fine too. Um, you have early access to this to the new annual catalog. You get to be part of my team, which I think is pretty invaluable. You get my PDFs for free, um, class kits at a discount, um, access to our team website and uh, Facebook group where we do challenges, prizes, giveaways, swaps, all kinds of things. Okay, so that ends in um, 10 days. Is that right? Yeah, 10 days, 10 days. So make sure you don't let these deals go by. Um, you because you know March 1st celebration is over and that's it that's all she wrote for this year's celebration all righty it looks like it's frozen no it's not um let's do prizes um <clears throat> our we have one winner this week because it's a bundle Ashley and I just emailed Ashley this morning we she was um redeeming her Stampers Roundup card. So Ashley, you are the winner for sharing the video. Thank you. She's getting the Artfully Layered Bundle. Um, Ashley, I have your mailing address. Ashley gets almost every Facebook Friday and I am so grateful um, for that, Ashley. I do appreciate you. All right, how about this one? Catch you later. How cute are those monkeys? I'll give away two of these next week. I'll pick two people who share the video at random. Um, you have to share it either on Facebook or YouTube. Leave me a comment. Let me know that you shared. Um, and then I will pick two people next week. Okay. All right. We are, we have a clear desk for the most part. I see that there's like a piece of cardstock stuck here. Um, if you haven't joined me for Facebook Friday before, I pick a product um, typically just one, and I design three projects with it. So like I said, this week we're doing Daffodil Daydream. There's a PDF on my blog that looks like this. You guys, is it up? Did you check it? Um, it has all the supplies that I use as well as any measurements that you might need. Today's are pretty straightforward. No, no tricky um, measurements. It also has the links to the things that I talked about. The other part of this is that if you want the projects for free, I will send them to you for free as make and take projects that you can make with your bundle at home. Um, I do that for free with anybody who puts in a $35 order or more um, by Monday at midnight. This is the host code. It's the same host code. I usually use the same host code for a few weeks in a row. So um, this is the same one. We'll probably have a new one next week. Um, if you don't want the um, make and takes, don't use the host code and I take that as code for please do not send me the make and takes. Thank you, but no thank you. Um, but if you do want the make and takes, please make sure you use the host code. Um, they look like this. They come with pretty much everything that you need to make the projects. You will need the daffodil bundle. So I'm not going to cut out all these pieces for you. You, I will send you the paper so you can cut them out. Um, you will need the paper, the ink, the adhesive, 
Um, I think that's it. Uh, I am using one other stamp today from um, the pe peony, peony set. But anyway, I send you a little thank you tag. I don't do any stamping for you, so you gotta do that yourself. All right, here we are. We're ready to go. Let's see, did I miss? Okay, good, thank you, Laurie. Good, thank you, you guys. Um, let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, let's see. There's Ashley, you're welcome. Um, let's see. Hmm. Okay, well, I will look through this more later. Um, next Facebook Friday, um, Jill, that's going to be the ladybug. The, uh, what's it called? Ladybug? You know, all I have to call it is the ladybug. Um, that will be next week. I've got, I've got a lot of things to show you with that next week. Okay. I don't know if Kate's on here. Kate, you have to let me know if you're on here. Um, here are the dies and actually I have them turned backwards. Here are the dies that come with the daffodil daydream bundle. Um, when you see them all together, it can be overwhelming, especially when I had all of them on one card. It's like, what in the world? So Stampin' Up! Um, had put out a photo somewhere, I think it was on their Facebook group, uh, a Facebook page, showing how to create each of the flowers. So I have recreated that, and I've put the photos on today's post, as well as put them in a PDF, so you can save them to your computer. Once you have this, I think it's much easier to see how the flowers are made. Um, so we're gonna make one of each. Um, and I'm gonna give you a few little tips along the way for piecing them together, all right? So let me get my tray over here. Let me get all my stuff. Of course, the first tray is on the bottom because that's how I do things. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite card today for sure because it uses my favorite paper. Um, like I mentioned, the paper is free. 12 by 12. And this is, let me just flip through it in case you haven't seen it. I mean, I want that in wallpaper. That is so cute. Seriously, so cute. Um, little hearts. So one side is, you know, daffodil. But then the other side, these prints can be used for other things, which I have used them for other things. I made a, a calendar in January using this with a cactus. So uh, you can use them for different things. But this paper right here on the front is really, really cool. We're gonna use that on the last project. So we're using my favorite print here um, to make this, but let's make our flowers first. Now you guys are gonna have to bear with me today because this is a lot of tedious work. Okay, but it's gonna be worth it because I'm gonna show you how we do this. I'm gonna try to zoom in. Let's see if I could just zoom in a little bit. Why won't it let me zoom in? <gasps> did it do it? I think it did. Okay, let me see. Let me look and see if that's too much. The first tip I'm gonna give you today is that you need to use adhesive sheets. Um, I don't know anybody who's like a total expert on liquid glue. I know that I have been a paper crafter for 25 years and I still make a mess of liquid glue. So if that is you, if you're like me, get the adhesive sheets. That's gonna make this significantly easier, all right? So I have cut my um, adhesive sheets down so that I can leave kind of a gap in between them. Oops, I've got a little bit hanging off. We don't want that. Um, I've, I've showed you guys this before. When you leave a gap in your adhesive sheets, it's going to make it a little bit easier to peel it off. Um, the, only, the only problem is you, we're doing a lot of pieces today and I won't be able to see where the gaps are, but keep that in mind when you're doing yours. We're going to do um, so saffron for the bottom layer and so saffron for the top layer. Um, but we're gonna ink the ones that go on the top. Now you can ink this paper ahead of time. You know what, I think I will do that. Um, there, there are clean recordings of all three of these projects over on YouTube. So if you wanna come back and rewatch anything, you can go over there and do that. Um, 
on the video for this, I inked them after I cut them. I think either way, you're gonna be fine. You have a little more control that way because you know exactly where you're gonna put those pieces. Um, but this way also is less, you know, tedious. All right, so I'm just gonna ink that with So Saffron so that it's gonna be a little bit darker than the bottom layers over here. All right, so let me get this out of the way and bring over our cut and emboss machine. So this is a big piece of So Saffron. Um, I'm, I, have another, I have another project that's gonna be on Monday's blog post that has this daffodil in a different color. Do any of you grow daffodils? Um, they're mostly yellow, white. There are some that have a little bit of like a pink or orange, right? Um, but from what I could tell through Google <laughs> is that most of them are yellow. Okay, so here, let's look at our first flower, right? You're gonna need um, two of these and two of these one of this and one of that, all right? So Stampin' Up! did an amazing job with these dies because we have two of these. They knew that we were gonna need two of those for our flowers, so they gave us two. Hallelujah. We don't have to run it through twice. All right, then let's see, we need one of these, and I've still got a little bit of, oh man, I've still got a little bit of paper in here. Let me get that out. Where's my magnetic platform when I need it? It's coming, it's coming. Next catalog, I believe. All right, so that actually, actually, whoa, whoa, what am I doing? Hold up, hold up, hold up. These are the So Saffron here. Okay, why is this sliding around? Let's put it like this and see if it'll stay. All right, so those are gonna be there. Now these, Little spider dudes, see they look like spiders. We need to put them over here on the darker where we've inked it, okay? This is the bottom layer, so over here without ink. This is, <laughs> I thought it got you out of there. This is the top layer, so we want that on the darker side. So that's that flower, and then there is this flower right here, and we're gonna need one of these and one of these again. And then here's another weird looking spider, and then kind of like a three finger flower, See how I've nicknamed all of them? And then this one and this one look like, remember those things that you would put on a like a pencil and you would do this and they would fly away? What are those called? Like whirly bird? Am I making that word up? I, am I the only one that knows um, <laughs> what those are called? Um, I just know that that's what that reminds me of. Okay, so again, we have enough dies to do all of this in one swoop. If I can get out yesterday's pieces, I should have done that ahead of time. Okay, so top layer's over here on the dark, bottom layer's over here. Here's the bottom of the whirly bird and the top of the whirly bird. <laughs> and then the last one over here, this is the easy one. You need one of these and one of these, okay? All right, and then that's all we have. That's all of our flower dies. So we'll put that there and that there. Now, raise your hand if you think I can get this on my cut and emboss machine without m moving it. I think I can. Let's see. <gasps> Look at that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I did. All right. Whoop. I was bragging. I got too cocky. Hold on. Hold on. Let's see. Come out a little bit. I think that one may be overlapping. No, it's not. Okay. We're good. You could use our, um, you know, our favorite post-it tape if you're having problems with your things moving around like me. All right, now we're gonna get all of these out. Um, you can use your dye brush if you want. Um, I just find that it's easier to do it like this sometime for this one in particular. I'm gonna pull all of those out. See, I love it when they come out and they're just waiting there for you and you don't have to poke them out. It seemed like there was something I wanted to tell you guys. Something, uh oh, that adhesive came off the back, so we gotta just make sure that that doesn't. Something funny happened this week, and I can't remember. I like to remember the funny things that happened so I can tell you guys during, 
during these times where you're just watching me do nothing. You know, these tedious times. But I can't think this week. My daughter, my youngest daughter, made a select basketball team, which, are we happy about that? Or is that going to disrupt our life for the next six <laughs> months? We're happy for her. We're not happy for us. Let's just say that. Select basketball is a lot of work, a lot of practices. But the good thing is, are, are there any other moms out there that are like me? I don't want to drive. I don't want to drive all over town. I don't want to do that. I want my daughter to play and be happy, but I don't want to have to go to all those practices. Surely I'm not the only mom out there like that. Um, but luckily, her um, Garcia, where she goes to school, her teammates, a lot of them made the team too. So we're working out a carpool situation. Okay, so let's go back to this one. Nope, nope, let's do this one first. I hope I have everything. It feels like I don't. I want you to look at this one right here. At first glance, it looks like it's the same, right? But it's not. If you look at this one petal, it has a little flat side and a little notch there, okay? That's how I orient myself with the way that this goes. This over here is kind of the same deal. They all look kind of the same, except for this guy. You guys see that? It almost looks like he lost a finger. Okay, this is how I memorize my multiplication tables and my spelling words when I was a kid. I have to make up these little stories to go along with things. But that's how I'm gonna orient myself. So there's the notch, right? And then when the notch is over here, the one that's missing a finger <laughs> goes to the left side of it like that, okay? So that's your little tip there. For, for figuring that out. It took me a little bit of um, trial and error to figure that out. Now see how that top layer is just a little bit darker than our um, bottom layer because we just put a little bit of, of uh, ink on it. Um, club sports, yes, Trish, club sports, yes. <laughs> Condolences to you. I know, you know, she's the third kid. And I would have, with my others, I probably would have been like, no, we're not doing that. Sorry, we've got other sisters here. We've got other things going on. But she's the youngest, you know, and you know how it is for the babies, man. No, they don't get everything they want. But mom and dad are just more likely to say yes because we're tired. Um, but um, I don't know. It's some travel, too. So I don't know what's going to happen. Um, we'll see. Uh, I don't, I just, I don't know. I told her yesterday, it better not get in the way of our boating in the summer. <laughs> okay, this one's an easy fit. Just go right on top of there. Um, I'm happy for her. You know, she has found her thing. That's all I ever wanted for my kids is for them to just find their thing. I didn't want the, to ever force them. I was a dancer and I had three daughters. You would think one of them would have been a dancer and not one of them. None of them wanted anything to do with it. When they were little, the two older ones, I had them in dance and uh, they hated it. So, but they've all found their thing and that's all I really care about is that they find that thing that they're happy with. And, uh, you know, if we can work out carpool, <laughs> then uh, it'll be okay. I hope it runs through September. So that's a really long time. Um, but, you know, we'll see. Okay, so that little spider thing goes on that thing there. Now this one, um, the whirly bird right here, it came off already, the adhesive. So you see how I'm picking that adhesive off the back. It just turns these into a sticker. You just stick them together like that. And then last but not least, we've got... Um, <laughs> Thanks, Christine. You know, that first that first child, I was much more of a control freak. Let's play, let's do dance, let's do soccer, let's do gymnastics, let's take piano. Blah, blah, blah. And then you have number two and number three, and you're like, okay, you guys can have one thing, pick one thing, <laughs> one thing at a time. And then, you, you know, I, I mean, I just, I'm kind of a lazy mom. I don't want to run somewhere every night. I don't. It's too much. It's too much. All right. So now all we have to do is these are your finished pieces and you're going to take them and look, so I've got some adhesive already on the back and we're going to put that kind of like a star, you know, 
Um, and then we'll get one of these. And look at that stripe through there perfectly makes that, getting that adhesive off so easy. All right, and then let's see, this one I'm gonna have going that way. You know what, one thing I did do with this, I know it has adhesive on the back, but I kind of liked putting a dimensional back there and popping it up a little bit. So you guys know how much I love dimensionals. You don't have to, but. All right, so there's the first flower. The second one, you take the little whirly bird and it goes on the bottom. And then you take the weird spider, three, three-fingered spider. <laughs> the three-fingered spider. And then you put that like, mm, like that, okay? It looks weird until you have it all together. All right, and then last but not least, we've got this one and I, maybe I will do a dimensional here too. Let's see, this goes, let me see how I did it, mm, like this, okay? And then dimensional, and we'll have it going that way. All right, so there's that one. And then we've got the little bud. So now we're ready to put it together. So remember, here are the cheat sheets. It's in a PDF form under, there's a link under this, the photo to this project today. And you guys can save it, um, print it for your reference. Where are the rest of my pieces? What am I looking for? Hello, right here. All right. So I have a basic black card base. I know some of you don't like a basic black card base. Every time I use basic black, I hear someone say, ugh, I don't like that. If you don't like it, that's fine. Just change it. But I like, I like black. It makes um, the colors of these things really pop off the card. All right, so we've got a piece of that DSP. And I'm going to put that right here on a flirty flamingo mat. like that and then we'll put that flat on our card base like that now vellum i find that stamp and seal will work fine on vellum as long as the background is not dark so the background is light and i put that on and you can't even see the stamp and seal when you do it on a dark color it does show up but not on a light color. The reason I did the vellum is just to kind of soften that busy paper um, so that the flower doesn't get lost in the pattern. Now, I spared you guys more cutting, but I did the exact same thing here with um, Old Olive and the stems. Put those adhesive sheets on the back. And we're gonna start with this one up here. They're a little bit too long, so we're gonna have to trim them off at the bottom. All right, and I think I'm gonna put this, this one on with a dimensional right here, which is this one. Okay, like that. And then we'll do the little bud at the top as well. Okay, I think I cut my, I, well, I don't know. I. I ran my thing through and then ran it back through and I think the the die slipped a little bit because I these are I noticed that <laughs> there was a little bit of an outline that had been cut off. But hey, it's fine. It works. All right, now you just stick that little thing in there like it's coming out of the bud. And then I've got these look like butter knives to me, or maybe hockey sticks. You take your hockey stick and we're gonna put this one right over here. Um, and then we're gonna do our last flower. My iPad fell down and it's bugging me. I call my career hauling her around. Oh, Patricia. She was young as a three and I was 40 when she was born, so I was exhausted. <laughs> yeah, but you know, by the time they get close to their driver's license, you're like, oh my gosh, please. Um, and I, let me tell you, my oldest, when she turned 16, we were all about like, okay, we are getting her a car because we were tired of driving her everywhere. It's nice when they can start driving them themselves. Um, 
She refs often at Baylor. Wow. She's a professional referee for the NCAA. That is incredible. So all your driving around paid off. That's an awesome story. Thank you for telling me that. I love it. I'll have to tell my husband that too. All right, let's see. I'm feeling like something's happening here. I didn't put these far enough over. Let's see. Well, that one's just going to go like that. Okay, so now we've got these. Oh, wait, we've got one more hockey stick. Let's put that one on the right side. Like that. Now we're going to come down here and scissors are over here. We're just going to trim those off towards the bottom. All right, so do you guys feel like that, that little cheat sheet? My little nicknames, <laughs> maybe a little bit will be kind of helpful when you put your daffodils together. I wanted to kind of simplify it because I know I was very overwhelmed when I um, first started using these. All right, Happy Mother's Day is the sentiment I am using. And I now have three Mother's Day cards, one for my mom, one for my mother-in-law, and I don't know, one for me. There we go. Happy Mother's Day. Um, that is a very vanilla label cut with ornate frames, I believe. And we're going to take a couple of these uh, Genial Gems, which is a dumb name, I think. I don't know why they're called Genial Gems. Whatever. They didn't ask me. And put that there. And then because it's a black card base, we got to put a piece of vanilla inside. The reason I'm using vanilla, and I'm going to point this out in the next card because I made a mistake and used white. Um, the color in the designer series paper, the neutral, is not white. It's actually our very vanilla. So um, you got to be cognizant of that when you buy the paper. Make sure that you have the coordinating, you, you know, if it's vanilla or white. All right, so there you go. What do you guys think? This is my favorite card. Now, if you don't need a Mother's Day card, and if some of you are like, I don't need that, just change the sentiment. This stamp set, I don't, I'm not, I don't totally love this, the um, sentiments, although I know many of you do send Easter cards. That's not something I've ever done, but I know a lot of you do. So there's an Easter sentiment. But, I mean, thank you, um, sympathy, I'm thinking of you, happy birthday. This card literally could be anything except for maybe a 10 year old boy's birthday card, <laughs> right? I mean, really, it could be anything. So change the sentiment to make it fit your needs. All right, I hope you guys like that one. All right, let me see, do I need this? No, I'll put this over here and this over here. We're gonna do the next card. With this, with this um, bundle, there's two ways to do the daffodil. There's what we just did. And then there's the stamped version. Now, as I look at this, <laughs> as I look at this card, I feel a little sick to my stomach because I'm having, if any of you are tech people out there, I would love for you to help me. This is the card that we're making. And I actually made it four times already because my phone keeps shutting down in the middle of my videos. And... The other thing that it's doing is that when I transfer it to my computer, it looks just fine on my phone, but then when it gets to my computer, it's all washed out, like overexposure is what it looks like. You know when you develop film and it's overexposed? I don't know why. That has just started in the last maybe three weeks. If any of you know what that is, why that's happening, I would love a suggestion because I'm having to re-record I'm having to splice. I'm having to do all kinds of weird things to get these stupid videos to work. Anyway, okay, here's the next card. Now, this is the original, and you'll see that I used white. Um, I didn't realize it was vanilla in the, in the paper um, until I started putting it together. Now, I think this is probably okay because the, the little plus signs on here or X's or whatever they are um, are so tiny that, you know, at a distance, you're not going to be like, oh, you used white and not vanilla. I'm going to try to zoom back out. Let's see if I can do that. There we go. Um, but then notice that on the vanilla, it's, it's, it's very muted when you do it on vanilla. It's very muted. I kind of like the white better. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know if you guys can tell on the camera, 
um, but they're very different. But anyway, that's, that's what we're gonna do. Um, I pulled a sentiment from this set right here, Prized Peony, like I said. Um, I didn't wanna use the other ones for this. Um, so I'm using So Sorry For Your Loss. Unfortunately, I've needed some sympathy cards lately. Um, so that's a good one um, to use. And it's nice to have those around so that you can quickly pull them out. I'm also using this tag die right here. This is the pretty pillow box. Remember this one from Christmas time when we were using it so much from the holiday catalog? Um, this is still available online. Uh, it's not in the current catalog. It's carrying over. It's either going to be in the annual catalog or it's going to be in the next um, fall catalog. Um, but you can get it online. Okay, so that's what we're using right there. Alrighty, let's do our stamping first. I have very vanilla cardstock, and we're gonna use our memento black. Oh, I'm, my comments aren't. Um, you like the white too? Yeah, it really isn't noticeable. Now, if you were to use it like with this paper, it would be noticeable because that's a lot of vanilla. But those little X's um, are so small that. I think it's fine. Although I know I have some friends who would be like, ugh, absolutely not. You cannot mix the two. I, I have some friends who just cannot handle that. They hate it, which I get. I mean, I don't love it, but um, it doesn't bother me that much. All right, we're gonna stamp both sets of flowers in memento black on our very vanilla cardstock. We have very vanilla, like regular weight, and then we have very vanilla thick um, for your card bases. Uh, so if you need vanilla for card bases, that you wanna get the thick. Um, it's, it's a heavier weight and your card's gonna feel more um, substantial, or it's gonna, you know, it's not gonna be so flimsy. Because our white and vanilla are a little thinner less heavy for card bases okay so here's a tip for you um typically you don't need to do this when you're using your stamp and blends but for whatever reason the yellows if i don't set my ink the yellows will smear the ink just the yellows occasionally petal pink but not always i don't know it's weird so i always just heat set it or stamp it and give yourself an hour and then that usually um, takes care of the problem. All right, so we're gonna, I should have stayed zoomed in, shouldn't I? Let's see, I had luck last time. Let's see if it's gonna let me zoom in this time. Nope. All right, I guess not. Um, I'm gonna take my So Saffron Light and I'm using my brush end because I'm just kind of flicking on some color. I'm not, you know, being real nice and neat and i'm also not going towards the end i'm leaving the ends light oops i forgot a petal right there then i'm going to take my dark and wherever there would be um overhang like that right there you want to put some dark um where there's those lines there on each petal you want to put some dark um that's going to give you some variation and I feel like my saffron's really light. Um, so, I mean, saffron is a light yellow. So we can go back and add some color, give it a, you know, a minute or so to dry and add some color. Now, the other thing that you can do is use your color lifter to remove color from the ends of those um, petals. You know, that kind of makes it look like the sun is shining on it. Let's see if I can add some more. I do think that the color is much more bright and vivid on basic white. Okay, so there we go. And then I'll show you just a second. I'll hold it up close. So then you could take your color lifter and just kind of remove some color from the end. So can you guys see how that just kind of looks like maybe the sun is shining on it? And then that one, the color lifter, I don't know, I feel like it doesn't work as well on very vanilla like it does on, on white, on basic white. Okay, now 
Old Olive, Old Olive Light. Uh, Sandy, you've had your ink smear as well. Yeah, heat set it, that seems to solve the problem. Another thing, um, another thing that I have just really, just really like to do is use our thick basic white and our thick vanilla for coloring with blends. I just, for some reason, I just feel like the ink behaves a little bit differently. It's less likely to bleed out. Um, it kind of holds the color a little bit better. That's just from my experience. Um, so if you have, if you have thick white or thick vanilla, you might want to give that a try and see if you notice a difference. Something else I've noticed, which is has nothing to do with this, but it just made me think. Um, those of you with an iPhone, has your camera suddenly changed? The portrait mode on my, I use my portrait mode on my phone to take photos of my cards. And suddenly it's very different. It's like far away. And usually it's real close. Have any of you noticed that? I was talking to my friend Anne-Marie today and she said she had noticed something too, maybe with the last update. It's very strange. If you don't take a lot of pictures in portrait mode, you may not notice it, but I use it every single day. So... Oh, I know what I was going to tell you guys. So here in San Antonio, I'm adding dark in here. Again, overlapping underneath, below, we're adding the dark old olive. Here in San Antonio in February, we have the stock show and rodeo, um, which is so fun. It's like your fair, like your state fair, or the county fair. Um, my husband and I went this week and we saw um, Sam Hunt. I know I have some country singing, country music fans on here because you guys have told me before and he was so good if you ever have a chance to see sam hunt in concert you should go see him he um came up into the crowd literally like four rows from us and sang to a bunch of teenage girls it was so cute he's very good and i was surprised that the arena the stadium whatever was about half empty um i don't know i would think he's pretty popular I don't know. I don't know. That was our excitement. Even my husband was excited about it. And my daughter was impressed. All right. Do you love Sam Hunt? Yeah. I I like I like him a lot. I had to kind of like rein it in because my husband was like, you know, he's he's uh he used to play football and he's all young and handsome. I was like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Didn't notice. All right, those are too close. I gotta run that through twice. Um, where is my tag I don't know what you're talking about dear I didn't even notice you guys will have to google him if you don't know who he is he uh he's relatively new but he said last night that he, or Wednesday night that he uh has been doing this since 2014 which means he's not that new all right so there we go don't you love it when we have the dies and I don't make you fussy cut I know I know me too I love it all right, let's do this one like that. I want to go back um, tomorrow. They have a, they have a whole like um, the shops. They call them the shops at the rodeo, and there were some adorable things. And I of course was with my husband, so we like walked real fast through. He, you know, was like you can look, and I don't like shopping with my husband. It's too much pressure. Um, but I want to go back and do some shopping. There was a cactus pillow. If you guys saw my Instagram stories, there was a cactus pillow that I need in my life. It was so cute. All right. We got all the pieces. I have a stitched, um, rectangle. Let me measure it and tell you guys which one it is. So I have a hard time telling these stitched rectangles apart. This one is three by about four and three eighths. All right, one thing I didn't do on my original, where's my ink pad? There it is. One thing I didn't do on my original was use this little splatter. Um, I love a good splatter stamp. So we're just gonna add a little bit of splatter to our card, just for interest. So saffron. All right. And then we will dimensionals. Didn't I already use them? Here they are. 
<laughs> eye candy. Um, I told you guys last week you needed to, speaking of eye candy, you need to watch Reacher on Amazon. I don't know where that guy came from, but he's got a bright future. That's all I got to say. <laughs> all right, Dimensionals. My husband knew who he was. Apparently he's been in some dude movies, you know, some like war movies or something. I don't know. But I had never seen him before. All right, and this one we'll do kind of over like that. Um, I'm going to take my tag. Oh, Michelle, did you see my cactus pillow? You know, the guy had asked him if they had a store, and he said that they were opening a store, but not here. It was, like, really far. So he gave me the website, and the website didn't have the cactus pillow. So I'm kind of feeling like I need to go down there and get the cactus pillow because I can't stop thinking about it. You know when you walk away from something, if you can't stop thinking about it, that you should have gotten it. That's how you know. All right. Very vanilla Baker's Twine. We have Baker's Twine that matches all of our, well, not all of them, but most of our neutrals. Don't try to tie that in that hole. That's too hard. Just get a glue dot, make a bow, get a glue dot, and stick it on. No one will ever know that you didn't tie it through. My, my thought with this card was... Um, you know, like a bundle of flowers tied together with a tag. So that's kind of what I was going for. That just, that little guy will not stay turned. Okay, fine. You want to go that way? Go that way. There we go. All right. So that's that. And now all we're going to do is put a piece of this designer series paper. And, you know, again, I think any of the patterns within this pack would be fine here. Um, you could use whichever papers you want. Lisa, yes, Reacher, yes, I know. Reacher. Um, Denise, yeah. <laughs> Denise watched Reacher too. Yep, 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 yep. I know, I know. I don't know where that guy came from and why he hasn't been in more things. All right, there you go, you guys. That's an easy card compared to the other one, right? There you go. I, I really think I like the white better, even though it doesn't match. Um, I think I like it better. Oh, wait, but wait, there's more. We forgot the black matte dots. And I need my other end. I put some matte, black matte dots. Why are they called matte black dots? You know, I really should be on the naming committee. I don't know if there is a naming committee, but if there's one, I need to be on it because I have strong opinions <laughs> about the names of these things. Okay, I think that's good. There you go. They say to do embellishments in odd numbers, so I, I feel like one needs to go there, but I'm gonna leave it off. All right, there you go, card number two. All right, we've got one more, and this one is our super easy card. Hold on, let me get a drink, just a second. I got to see my million dollar achiever stamp set this week. We, um, Stampin' Up! sends out product surveys to leaders, and I got a product survey this week, and I got to see it, and I almost cried. It was very, very exciting. Can't wait for you guys to see it. It'll be in next spring's catalog. Okay, so we're going to make this little card kind of like a window pane card. This sheet of the designer series paper, I mean, all you have to do is cut this into Card front and put on a sentiment, really. It's so beautiful. I got a card in the mail a while back. I don't know if I showed you guys or not. Um, Laurie sent it to me. And uh, that's basically what she did. Um, she did a little bit of Wink of Stella. She did the sentiment on a stitched rectangle, some brass butterflies, and then some of that, my favorite, gingham ribbon. I loved this card. Um, even though I'd seen this paper before, when I opened it, it made me go, <gasps> because it was just really pretty. Um, so that is an option. Oh, goodness, my, <laughs> something just fell off my wall. Um, that's an option for this paper, okay? But what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it apart into some little squares. Let me get my trimmer. Oh, for her bridal shower, Lisa, that's a great idea. That's perfect paper for that. And it's all free. Okay, so we need four squares that are one and a half by one and a half. And I want most of them to be filled with this stuff, but I wanted this one to be a little bit um, 
open, right? So what I'm going to do is, you know, now if you're not as particular as me and you, you don't really care about what's in your squares, you could get a lot of cards out of it doing it this way, but I'm going to take it and I'm going to cut it so that I have this right here kind of at the top. So let me see. Um, and then we'll start measuring it. Okay. So about like that. So then that means I need to come over here and cut it like that. So this is one and a half by, now I'm going to make it one and a half. Now I'm not going to, it's kind of like a puzzle, right? Putting the pieces together, but I'm, I'm going to kind of not do that because I didn't, I didn't want this piece to be my other piece. So I'm going to cut some of this and put there. <laughs> Am I speaking like a caveman? Put this there. That's what I'm going to do. Put a little bit of this there. Um, basically, I need to turn this into two squares. All right. One and a half, one and a half. Like that. And I'm going to take that and do kind of like that. Mm, no, I'm going to do that. Kind of like that. Now, they don't fit together like a puzzle. That's okay. That's all right. They don't have to. All right. Now, I wanted some of the green, the dark green down here. So we'll, let's see, we're going to cut this one for that bottom corner. I don't know why I'm being so particular and picky about it, but that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted and that's what I'm getting. <laughs> All right, now my original card base, you guys, I did on Mossy Meadow. Um, when I cut supplies, I thought it was Old Olive. So um, you can see the difference, not much of a difference. Um, okay, so you've got those four, then you're gonna need four um, Old Olive or Mossy Meadow squares that are one and five eighths by one and five eighths. All right, and we're just gonna mat those little pieces on here. Like that. So next week is the ladybug and I just finished, I, I had two of the projects done. I finished the third one this morning and it is so cute. I cannot wait to show you guys. Um, if you wanna make something with with it along with me you need to get the lint butterflies i'm mean, ladybugs you know what i'm talking about on the easter candy the little chocolate ladybugs i got the ones that have the ladybugs and the bees so if you want to be prepared for next face next week's facebook friday you need to get some of those this week at the grocery store okay okay so i have a piece of very vanilla once again in um, very vanilla, <laughs> a piece of very vanilla cardstock in very vanilla. What I meant to say is a piece of very vanilla cardstock that is four by five and a fourth. I'm gonna stamp the Easter blessings down here in Old Olive, and I'm gonna do this first in case I'd stamp it crooked. Is it crooked? It is a little bit, let's try it again. That way we can go for it again on the back side. Because if you do all your squares and then you stamp it crooked, ugh, you have to, Take them off, start over. Now, to get these straight, you could be real particular and use a ruler or a, you know, this one's not straight at all, or a, um, what do they call those? Those things that, you know, it has the T um, across the top. But I'm just going to eyeball it because that's how I do things. I'm not real worried about perfection. I feel like that needs to be moved over a little bit. I am using dimensionals. Um, let's move that one over a little bit and see. So what you can do is get that ruler, once you have them on there, and you can, I'm gonna put two back here because this one keeps twisting around. And you can, uh, Take your ruler and see. Yeah, pretty straight. Um, let's see, Diana, what, what did I miss? What's Diana's question? 
Is there somewhere where we can see all of these million dollar stamps as in one location? No, Diana, there's not because they come out um, in different catalogs, but you can Google it maybe and see them. They've been doing that for about, what, maybe five years now? All right, we're gonna do this one right here. Oh, no, 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 no. This one right here. I wanted that dark green in that corner. And then this one. Hi, Peps, you're being very quiet. Right there. All right, that looks good to me. Now we're gonna put this on a, the card base with these dimensionals, one in each corner. And then we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit more stamping. We're gonna do a couple butterflies. Um, I do want to get my wink of Stella. Grid paper too, Heidi will work. Yeah, that helps keep things straight. Our grid paper is good for so many things. And you know what I did this week? I ordered grid paper for my Stamparatus. And it is, it is so good. Let's see, I have it right here. The little, the little baby grid paper. It's, you know, you can use this for not your grid, for not your Stamparatus, right? I mean, it's just big enough for like where you might need to do something small. I saw somebody else do that. And I thought I need to get some of that grid paper. I love it. The little, I mean, I, yes, you could cut your big grid paper down, but everything's cute when it's small. And it comes in a little pad. It does fit perfectly on your Stamparatus. All right, two butterflies in Memento. I'm gonna hit it with a heat tool for just a few seconds. <gasps> what, Carla? Strawberry Hostess cupcakes and key lime cupcakes. Okay, where? I haven't seen those. I, yeah, I gotta find those for sure. I love key lime. Remember when we did the key lime Kit Kats? Oh, those were so good. I haven't seen those. Um, I was at the grocery store this week too. I typically order my groceries so I don't have to go in the grocery store. We have HEB and they you can order your groceries for pickup for free. I mean, hello. But I'm noticing that a lot of things in the store aren't on the online order anymore. Hello, I need to color this. I'm distracted by the key lime. <laughs> let's color it before we cut it out all right pale papaya i'm just gonna do the whole butterfly like that and then go back with the dark um sandy that's a good idea sandy says she's gonna have her grid paper laminated and then you can wipe it off yeah that's a good idea we have some um grid paper that has been like special grid paper for different occasions um in fact i have some right here that i just pulled out See this pretty paper for on stage? This special paper, that would be something I should laminate. Okay, light. I have a laminator too. I wonder where it is. <laughs> I haven't used it in a while. All right. Light, so saffron. Dark, so saffron in the middle. And now we will cut them out with our little cute cut and emboss mini machine. The little baby, it's just very cute. Thanks, Michelle. This one is so um, easy to turn also. I don't know if you guys notice, sometimes on my big one, I have to put my hand on top of it like that. Um, this one is just like, so it doesn't, does not need that much um, muscle. Even a child could do it. If I was still teaching, I would probably have to get that for my classroom for the kids. They loved, I used to, when we had the big shot, I would bring the big shot into the classroom sometimes and they loved using it, loved it. Okay, I'm going to um, get some mini glue dots. I'm gonna fold it kind of so it'll pop out and I'm just going to use a glue dot. And we'll put that one right there on the tip. See, I, I, that's why I really wanted to leave that white or vanilla open space there so that butterfly would stand out because the other one's just kind of going to kind of blend in. 
I need it. I don't like having these two things together. I need to switch that out. There we go. I think, I think we need a little wink of Stella on the butterflies too. Just a little. And then there you go. That's an easy, easy card. Again, with the sentiment, if you don't send Easter cards, don't use the Easter sentiment find something else. This could be a Mother's Day card. This could be birthday, thinking of you. Again, I think the only the only occasion probably you couldn't use this for is a 12-year-old boy. <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Uh, maybe if you put spiders instead of butterflies, it could be for a boy. Okay, that's it, you guys. Um, let me show you a couple of other things. Look, I have so many of these because I had to film that video so many times. Um, remember the cheat sheet is there on my blog for this. Hold on, I wanted to show you the two other cards that I have. I posted this one yesterday with a Mother's Day. Um, the uh, paper is embossed, isn't that beautiful? And there's a little bit of orange in there around the edge. Good. I If you're gonna color your um, daffodils, I encourage you to Google search and the images so that you can see all the different colors. And then this one, look at that, isn't that fun? It matches the colors right there in that designer series paper. Um, this will be on Monday, on my blog on Monday. Okay, there you have it. Remember, if you would like these three make and take for free, uh, make sure your order is in Monday by midnight. Don't forget celebration ends in 10 days. Don't forget flowering rain boots class deadline is tomorrow. Um, don't forget, I don't know, next Friday, same time, same place, two o'clock, ladybugs. Um, I have a lot of ladybug projects, so I'll post them leading up, and then afterwards I'll have um, one more the, the Monday following. You guys, we had fun today. Thank you. Um, Carla, I'm going to have to come back and see. What did you say? Walmart, you think? I, was walk I haven't been to Walmart in a while. I bet that's where I do find a lot of Hostess cupcakes at Walmart. <laughs> I will go and get them. I will not disappoint you. All right, you guys, have a great one. I will see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye.